I'm Elisa Camelhart Page from Blogger. You're one of the co-founders. That's right. I'm one of the co-founders and COO. So as, a, as COO, what do you do? So actually, I have three main areas that I focus on. The first is the events. So I manage our event team, uh, both from a logistics point of view, and then I personally manage the programming for all of our conferences. Uh, the second area is marketing and PR, so uh, I work on all of our press and social media outreach. And the third area is just general and administrative, so I manage HR and finance and all those areas. What has been the uh, uh, feedback for this conference so far? Well, so far I'm happy to say I'm getting lots of positive feedback. It seems like people are just really excited to be here and everybody is finding somewhere to find to go to hear about exactly what they're interested in hearing about. We really work hard to provide you know, a wealth of content. So we want people shaking their fists at us that they can't choose between sessions. And that's what I'm hearing is that um, there's really something for everyone at every time. And that makes me very happy. What was the agenda or what was the mission statement that you had for this conference? Well, our theme this year is reach, and it really has a double meaning because reach is, of course, the fact that women bloggers are reaching a huge audience. Out across our blog, her network, we're reaching over 8 million unique users a month. Uh, so the voices of women are being elevated and rising and being heard in so many ways that just was not possible uh, a few years back. And, of course, the other aspect of reach is personally reaching. What are the goals that you're reaching for? And we asked that question on our registration survey. You know, what, are you, what are your blogging goals this year? What are you reaching for? And people had such a wide range of answers. And we projected some of them before the conference started. Um, we pulled out some, and we're just showing them looping through. And it was really fun to see all the variety of goals. So at a personal level, what are you reaching for? Well, I, I'm reaching for, we're doing something new this year in October. We're going on a six-city reach-out tour. Uh, we're going to hit six cities in two weeks with a series of one-day conferences that are actually customized per city. So I am reaching to bring Blog Her out to more parts of the country. I am reaching to try and reach um, more of the women in our network who just possibly can't make it to San Francisco. You know, a thousand people can get here, but hopefully in those six cities we'll be able to reach out to even more people. Um, so I, I'm just continuing to reach to send the message that it, it's built by the community and what do people want to hear, what do people want to see, and how can we help you hear and see what it is that you want. And what are the six cities? When do you kick off this? We kick it off October 11th in Boston, and then we hit D.C., uh, Greensboro, Nashville, Atlanta, and New Orleans. So it looks like it's the East Coast and the... Yeah, we're going down the coast and across the south. Oh. And what about the Midwest and down to Texas? Well, so last year we were in Chicago for the annual event, so we've been there. We've obviously been on the West Coast. We do a business conference in New York. So that's why we kind of wanted to hit these other East Coast cities and uh, the South, because we've never been anywhere near those areas. And next year we'll see, we polled the communities about what's, uh, the community about what cities they were interested in us visiting, and that's how we came up with our whole schedule this year. And we'll do the same thing again this year and see where people want us to go next year, and hopefully we'll continue to hit new cities. How many women bloggers are there in the USC? Well, BlogHer recently partnered with Compass Partners to do an independent research study. We surveyed two populations, the BlogHer network population, and then uh, an, a recruited online panel that represented the U US Women Online, um, was weighted and distributed to represent US Women Online. And out of that general population survey, we learned that 53% of American women online are in the blogosphere weekly, both publishing and reading. And so that's a huge increase. The last survey was done two years ago um, that we know of, and it shows just a huge increase and shows that blogging has really become mainstream. I mean, that's, a, that's an equal or higher percentage than downloading music, than sharing photos online. Uh, it's, it's very significant. Do you have a number in terms of, you said 53% of women? So that's a, I think it's about 36 million women a week are, are visiting the blogosphere weekly either to read or publish. Okay. At a personal level, you are pretty techy. You know, you have a friend feed, you have a Twitter feed, and you have a blog. How do you manage all of that and what you do at Blogger? Uh, well, I'm kind of anal attentive, and I use spreadsheets. And um, the thing is the technology... This is the beautiful part about this technology. It has become easier for the regular user 
to use. So even though I was in high tech product management, my pre-blogger days, I wasn't personally a programmer by any stretch. But when I started blogging, I've, I've been quoted before as saying, I think blogging is the gateway drug of technology. I could start blogging with no knowledge whatsoever of HTML, and I had none. But over time, as you start blogging, you want to make your blog better, and you want to make it look better, and you want to make it function better. And I taught myself HTML. I've taught myself how to read and you know fool around with CSS. So a lot of people teach themselves Java, teach themselves PHP, teach themselves video, audio, all of these tools. And at the same time, developers are starting to make it easier and easier to play around with these technologies. Um, and that's the beautiful part about it, because it really has opened up the opportunity for lots of people to participate online that never could before when you needed to hire a web designer, which I actually did, you know, for my first consultancy. You know, I hired someone to make my website. Today, I wouldn't need to do that. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, it sometimes can be a little bit of information overload, and I just try to rely on my RSS reader, and I try to prioritize and, and, and try to participate so that I'm out there and people know how to really reach blog her without driving myself crazy. <laughs> and you, how do you tweet? Do you use a laptop or a phone? I actually mostly use it on, on you know, when I'm online on my desktop or my laptop. Uh, I occasionally tweet from my mobile. I have an iPhone and it is a pretty, you know, it is pretty easy to do. But I tend to be chained more to my laptop or desktop than I'm chained to my mobile. Final question. Did you stand in line for iPhone? Uh, so my husband, um, he stood in line on the very first day in June last year for the first iPhones. And while there, and he's a Mac developer, and while there, he met some uh, Apple worker, Apple employees who told him about a job opening. Um, and he ended up getting a job at Apple, like going to the mother ship for a Mac developer, <laughs> and out of standing in line for the iPhone. So that worked out. And I wasn't sure I was going to, he bought one for me, and I'm like, I don't know. Now I'm so addicted to it. Haven't gotten the new one yet. I'm waiting for him to get it um, to see if the coverage is better in our house. And now he's an Apple employee, so we're hoping they'll announce an Apple employee discount sometime soon. They haven't yet. So, so are you a, I don't know what the female equivalent of a fanboy is. A fangirl? Of, <laughs> you know, Steve Jobs should just walk around with me in his pocket and make me his spokesperson. I had never touched a Mac until um, probably five years ago. And here I was, I was dating a total Mac geek, and he kept telling me and telling me. I was like, yeah, whatever, I, I, I use a PC. And, um, and I never used a computer for personal anything. It was a laptop for work, and I did my email, and I did my work, and that was it. And then I saw the Steve Jobs keynote that introduced the iPod and the new iMac that looked like a lamp and iTunes. And I, all of a sudden, I was like, I want that. And I ordered it, and I just got myself all this Mac regalia. And, and I switched, you know, and now I use the computer for all this personal expression, personal creativity, all this stuff I never did before. Um, so I wrote, a, I wrote a post once that he should walk around with me as this pocket little commercial. He never did. So. Maybe you're hanging out in the wrong places. I guess so. I should hang out in line for the iPhone. You should be on University Avenue. Yeah, there. I probably would have met him in line instead of, <laughs> but we're happy with uh, who my husband met online. That's the best part. Thank you so much, Elisa. Thanks, Kamala.